I thought it was better, no better way to open the show, obviously, with Eddie Guerrero, um, who passed away uh, two two days from Monday, 18 years ago, two days from Monday um, in 2005. Uh, obviously, near and dear to our wrestling fandom <laughs> lineage um, with Eddie. Um, and I just wanted to start off with uh, a tribute to Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero. Um, obviously one of the best luchadors of all time, one of the best wrestlers of all time. Um, bringing the luchador style to the main stage, especially with WCW in the mid-90s, um, and just blossoming from there, um, going to WWE, paving his own way and reaching the mountaintop in uh, 2004, winning the uh, WWE Undisputed title um, from Brock Lesnar. Um, a monumental moment for him, Latin wrestlers, luchadors, uh, uh, but I just wanted to start off with just mentioning Eddie Guerrero and, uh, what do you guys remember from Eddie Guerrero, his career, best moments, um, Eddie in general? Well, I think it'd only be right that, that the, the, the number one fan of Eddie Guerrero, uh, take this first. Uh, so we go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I know as I don't know if anybody heard, but I was definitely singing that song because, uh, Every, uh, no, not even every, the main wrestling game I ever played was SmackDown, Here Comes the Pain, and all my intros was always that song, Low Rider, Eddie was life, Eddie was the, yeah. Eddie was definitely, it was, I don't even know if it was more of a thing that he looked like me, I don't know, maybe that was probably like the big factor, but um I don't know. I felt it's funny because I remember seeing Eddie coming in to WWE. I didn't really watch him as a kid in WCW, but I remember him coming in as Latino Heat, you know, just like the roses. And I remember he had the stuff with China and stuff like that. And then to see his progression, you know, and when he started bringing out the low riders, him and Chavo, um, obviously all the, the lying, the cheating, the stealing. You know, I feel like I hadn't seen anybody, I guess well, you probably wasn't even a heel at the time, just using these tactics and getting over so, so much, whether it was just like banging the mat with the chair and then being like, oh, he took me out. And then the ref's like, what did you do? <laughs> Bell, um, you know, just a great, great character. And for me, definitely him. I, you know, I've said this before, my parents didn't buy the pay-per-views, so I didn't get to see that spectacular win. <laughs> <laughs> I had to see the highlights on, uh, you know, the next day, but that was a great, you know, obviously I older, got to see it, and um, that was a great moment. Watching that match now, it's like, and even watching the promos he did before that match was like, you know, that man was passionate about wrestling he put everything that into that run mm -hmm. you know all the demons he was fighting you know it's well documented that you know he had substance abuse issues and stuff but to come out on top um and reaching his goal and proving to everybody that you know you work hard you you, you get there um it's just a shame that he's still not around to um know how many people he's influenced and he's one of the main people of why i love wrestling so Definitely captivated my heart for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's it's weird when you think about it, like how influential Eddie Guerrero is to a lot of uh, talent and to a lot of promotions these days. I mean, Lewis mentioned it. The whole um, 
flopping gimmick that he started in in professional wrestling. But think about it: flopping in professional uh, professional wrestling, or acting like the other guy, acting like the other guy uh, attacked attacked him. Uh, you you wouldn't even think that would be a concept in, in in an art form like professional wrestling, where where you already have people who who um, say it's you know it's it's fake and and everything. But the fact that Eddie Guerrero was able to take that and make it make it a gimmick to the point that in every every promotion every promotion has at least done that that spot of acting like they got hit with a chair and acting knocked out that that that's all Eddie Guerrero that's very <laughs> influential. that's how influ- influential he was. But I always go back to when he beat Brock Lesnar for the title, like uh, Daniel mentioned. You know, it's funny because as kids, when as when we were younger and we watched him win the title, you know, we were we were excited and we were ecstatic. And now, when we think about it now, as you know, as adults, and you, and you really like think about like how the, the direction the company was in at the time. I mean, Eddie Guerrero won the title, and then a month later, Chris Benoit won the title at WrestleMania. So you really saw how like the company, how like the company was like mm-hmm. ch- changing directions mm-hmm. as far as you know with their with their top talent. You had Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit, two guys who who were who were known as like your lower mid card guys in WCW. Couldn't really get, couldn't really reach the brass brass ring because of WCW's politics to then be signed by WWE, kind of go through their own trials and tribulations there. And eventually, they both reached re- reached the top of the zenith. Now, obviously, Chris Chris Benoit's, Chris Benoit's drama is also well documented, so we're not going to that. But as far as Eddie, as far as Eddie goes, I always go back to him winning 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 that that championship against Brock Lesnar because I don't even think at the time anybody even called that. He actually, oh, he not at all. And the reaction, the reaction of the uh, the crowd. Um, I think we uh, mentioned in in our very first episode. We always talk about the uh, match he had at Halloween Havoc or Rey Mysterio, and I was still stands stands the test of time to today. And how people still go back to that ma- match as m- one of their favorites for for Eddie Guerrero. But uh, the, the the man was the man was a tr- was a trendsetter, and and I don't know if you guys can uh, remember. The, the the day that he actually p- passed away, I think it was, what was that 05. So I think we, I think we, so if that's 05, it's no November 05. Were, were, were we all f- freshmen in, in, in high school at, the, at that time? Uh, <laughs> or or eighth graders in middle school? I think that's right was, before high school. Yeah, right. Yeah, so right, right, right. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're eighth grade. Well, like I can actually, rem- I can actually <laughs> remember uh, going home and going on WWE.com. And seeing the first tag on that oh, Eddie Guerrero, Eddie Guerrero passes away, and it was such a it was such a shock, and it was it was so so surprising, so so out of le- so out of left field, and they had a press conference with uh, Vince and Chavo up on up on the site, and you know to hear you know Chavo talk about him in the hotel room, how we found him unconscious and such. It means it still it still like sticks sticks out to sticks out to me even all these years later. But uh, Eddie Guerrero, it's been 18 years. I mean, he's he's a, he's, a, he's a trend center. He's an influencer. Um, I mean, so many got so many guys. I mean, the Three Amigos the Suplex. How many times have we seen seen that moved moved done amongst WWE, AEW, and such? <laughs> so, like I said, trend center, trend center influencer, and man, imagine all of the great matches he could, all the great matches and opponents he could have had if he if he was still here, like. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, uh, you guys summed it up perfectly. Um, I just think about oh, oh, just seeing his career building up from being a cruiserweight in WCW. I didn't even know about the Art Bar stuff, like in ECW and the Independence before that. So mm-hmm. finding out that stuff, um, in recent history, just seeing his tag team work in that area, you know, um, I just remember him being a, a asshole to Chavo in WCW um, just being that tough uncle on, on Chavo and putting him through the ringer, seeing that progression, um, seeing his battles with Ray Mysterio, Chris Jericho, uh, diamond Dallas page in WCW. He goes to WWE um, joins with the radicals who at that time were just like the kind of like the WWF outsiders, right. Coming into that, to that form and just they, those guys wreaking havoc. And kudos to those guys, Demon Linko, Perry Sad, and Chris Benoit, Eddie Guerrero. They all went as a team, but then they all branched off and found their own success in various different ways. Um, so to see that impact, that impact from the radical standpoint, and then him going on to being with China and Mama Sita and his face turn at that point in time, because I believe he was a heel when he went after China and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and seeing his humor even then. Um 
branching from that, being in the tag team division, I believe, was he with the SmackDown Six? Yeah, he was. was yeah, that, he was, was a that, part of the SmackDown was that him? Six. Was that him? Yeah. Stereo, yeah. Angle yeah, and Benoit. Was, yeah, so to that, be in that, <laughs> that was like 2002. So to see him be a part of that also is a part of tag team history and those banger matches and all those type of types of matches. Goes and gets the U.S. title and then main events. I believe it was in San Diego, uh, No Way Out 2004, was um, to have the crowd behind him, to have that type of match with Brock Lesnar at that time who was leaving. That was a pretty good damn match between those two. Um, turns around and puts on a great matches with Kurt Angle um, at WrestleMania um, and just continues to just put out banger and banger and banger with Rey Mysterio again and all these other things like that. And then even when he was on his way towards his passing, um, the work he was doing with Batista, um, we it was going to be awesome to see where that direction that was going to go to as well. Um, so you just see the transformation, transformation of Eddie Guerrero throughout his career, is continuing to reach new heights, continuing to put over guys, continuing to invent his style and luchador in a different way that nobody else we really haven't seen um, done. And to see how many people he's influenced, um, seeing how his legacy continues um, is awesome. So, and definitely deserves to be remembered, uh, uh, cherished, championed. Um, Eddie Guerrero, man, one of the greats, one of the guys I grew up watching, one of we all grew up watching. So um, uh, just to pay respect to Eddie Guerrero, who passed away 18 years ago for Monday. I um, uh, just want to say thank you for bringing us to wrestling and being one of those guys that we will always remember. And I'll, and I'll continue to move on from there. Um, uh, we can get into this being episode 41 of Ring Takes. We're going to be talking about all the heel turns that happened. <laughs> it seemed like this was the weekend, this this corner section of the week for uh, <laughs> WWE to 